Hi everyone, welcome back to another video, and we are continuing our series on the ovaries and production of estrogen, and last time we talked about the theca cells, which produce testosterone, and today we are going to be talking about the granulosa cells, which produce progesterone and estrogens, and this one is going to be a bit longer of a video because uh, this incorporates both the granulosa cell and the theca cell processes, so it might get a little bit complicated, so if you need to slow down, that is okay. Um, I'll try to make this as painless as possible, but it's a very fascinating mechanism. And then there's even more to add on after this um, with something called the corpus luteum. And we will get into that later. So don't worry about that right now. We're just going to add the next steps of estrogen th synthesis in the ovaries. So looking at our page, once again, we have our theca cell and we have our granulosa cell. We're just putting them right next to each other so that this all works. And this first process is going to start off kind of the same way um, as in every other pathway we've covered with cholesterol, uh, which will be converted by cholesterol desmolase to pregnenolone. And then uh, pregnenolone this time is going to be uh, converted to progesterone. So we do, unlike in the theca cell, we do have production of progesterone via 3-beta HSD. But here's an interesting thing about the granulosa cell. The granulosa cell can make progesterone from cholesterol, but it cannot do the rest of the pathway. Um, it cannot make any androgens. So we're going to have to float some progesterone to the theca cell in order to make the androgens to, to then give back to the granulosa cell to make estrogens. So the progesterone is going to leave the granulosa cell and it's going to go to the theca cell. Uh, which has the enzyme 17-alpha-hydroxylase to then convert progesterone to 17-hydroxyprogesterone. And then we're going to continue this pathway the same as we would to make androgens in the theca cell, um, where we have 17-hydroxyprogesterone to DHEA via 17-20-lyase, and then DHEA is going to be converted by 3-beta-HSD to androstenedione. And then androstenedione, it might be converted to testosterone here, just like we saw previously. Um, if we want to produce testosterone, we can produce it with 17 beta HSD. Uh, but also, androstenedione and testosterone are both substrates that can be used to make estrogens. And so either one of them, both of them, can float from the theca cell back to the granulosa cell to undergo uh, aromatization into estrogens. So we can see that here we have androstenedione can go back to the granulosa cell. Same thing as testosterone. It can go back to the granulosa cell and be converted via aromatase uh, to estrone uh, or to estradiol, respectively. And then as we know from before, estrone and estradiol can be interconverted via 17-beta-HSD. And then once those are produced, either your estrone or your estradiol, that can be released into the blood uh, to then go act on other tissues that um, have estrogen receptors. So last time we talked about LH, uh, which is a hormone produced by the pituitary that increases production of uh, testosterone in the theca cells. So now we're going to talk about LH and its counterpart FSH and how they would interact with this pathway now that we have estrogens being produced. So as we saw last time, uh, we had LH that bound to the LH receptor, and we have them on both the granulosa cells and the theca cells. As you can see, we have an LH receptor here for both of them. The LH is going to bind to this receptor. It's going to stimulate something called PKA, or protein kinase A, and then that is going to stimulate cholesterol desmolase, 3-beta HSD. All of these uh, steps in the uh, androgen pathway are going to be stimulated by LH. So this entire pathway up here, all of these enzymes are um, increased in synthesis with the release of LH and LH binding to this receptor. All right, so what about FSH? Well, FSH is going to bind to a similar receptor. And once again, I'll talk about the mechanism of cell signaling later on if you all want to hear about that. But FSH is going to bind similarly to a receptor and then it is also going to activate protein kinase A, also known as PKA, but FSH is primarily going to stimulate aromatase. So we get increased production of estradiol and estrone, um, namely increased conversion of androstenedione to estrone 
and testosterone to estradiol via aromatase. So FSH, think of that dealing with aromatase, think of LH uh, dealing with the rest of this pathway. And so as you can see here, it is a very integrated process to get from androgens to estrogens in the ovary. There's a lot of teamwork that happens here between the granulosa cells and the theca cells. And then we have some more aspects that are going to be brought into play um, in the next video with the corpus luteum. And that gets into a whole other thing about uh, maybe down the line we can talk about pregnancy and things. Uh, but these are just the foundational aspects of estrogen production in the ovary. I hope you like this video. Please leave your questions and comments down below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in the next one.